Shut up and sit down. Hello, 88 Mile Per Hour Universe. This is Eric. I am down here in Florida in the 88 Mile Per Hour studios, joined, as always, by my friend Hans Stuck, the German Shepherd, somewhere down around here. What I'm doing in this series, or this is a different series as the other shows that you've seen, we've got the 88 mile per hour regular car review show where we're driving the cars, we've got the 88 second car spotting where we're just doing a quick review of things that we see on the side of the road that we really enjoy. Now, I love to talk about cars. I could do it never ending. I drive my wife nuts with it. So this gives me an avenue to speak about cars. Now, it's just me and you. It's nobody else in this. It's not any other fancy cameras or we're not going to be able to drive the car or anything like that. But it's just sort of talking about cars, what I love about it, what I love about a certain specific car, what I like about cars in general. It just sort of gives a, I don't know, maybe a peek into what I really enjoy. So, or what really gets me going about cars or why I've decided to do all these shows. So... Hopefully you'll enjoy these and will stick with me. But what I have today is the first car we'll do, which is a 1961 Jaguar E-Type, or as they like to call it, the XKE. Beautiful car, historic car. Now these were made from 1961 through 1975 by Jaguar Cars Limited. Now, there were three different series in these vehicles. This is a Series 1, which being the 1961. Now, there are some variances. People talk about uh, the new year that came on, I believe, and uh, these went through 61 through 67. Then there was another model or another generation that came on, which was a Series 2. And then there was a Series 3 that wrapped up the whole line of E-Types in 1975. Now, there's been sort of a finite um, discussion between owners and clubs and such that this is not this particular one, but there are series one, series one and a half, uh, sort of splitting hairs. And the reason why is because these cars were handmade. They were ever evolving as they were being produced and made uh, using newer technology, changing little things here or there, whatever it may be. Um, so there were variances between the, say the first year of the same series towards the third and fourth year. So, uh, it's, it's interesting and they do split the hairs. Now, one of the big differences is from 1961 through 1964, they had the 3.8 liter straight six engine, which gave about 265 horsepower, uh, was a sub seven second car, about six and a half seconds, somewhere in there. So it was your 3.8 liter. Now come along in uh, 65 through 67, they had a 4.2 liter straight six again, which was the more sought after uh, engine, the more drivable engine, they should say. Um, and that was really the one um, that, and that, that's really that splits the series between people too, is the different engine and such, uh, and a more obvious split. But the 4.2 um, seems to be the more drivable, uh, sought after engine. The 3.8, uh, more the original towards the 61 beginning of the series, gives you more of the originality and a little bit more valuable because they are more unique and it's more of the first ones. Now, when the 4.2 came out, it had the same horsepower as the 3.8, but it had 10% more torque, pulled the same zero to 60 time, but as I said, it was just more drivable. So if you're having more torque, you're gonna pull out of the corners better, whatever it may be, it's just, uh, and that straight six by design is a torquey engine to begin with. So uh, yeah, it's an interesting choice on that. Now this car only weighed 1,315 kilograms or 2,900 pounds. It was released in March 1961. Now, of course, as everybody knows, I'm just sort of playing with this and showing you as I go. As everybody knows, not everybody knows, but as many people know who are fans of this car or like, uh, you know, exotics in general, Enzo Ferrari claimed that this was the most beautiful car ever made when he laid his eyes on it. So him saying that about a different manufacturer's vehicle, I mean, it says something. Between the acceleration, the monocoque construction, the disc brakes, the rack and pinion steering on these, the independent front suspension, rear independent suspension, that really distinguished this car amongst anything else out there really at the time and really pushed forward the boundaries of other vehicles and where they were going and where it sort of led the sports car industry or the consumable sports, consumer sports car industry, I should say. So, I mean, this, this car was really, you know, cutting edge at the time and just by design, 
I mean, to me today, it's just still a beautiful car. Now, it reminds me a lot of the BMW, uh, the M, excuse me, it was built off the Z3 uh, convertible, but it was the M Coupe, which was the Z3 convertible with a hard top. It looked like a clown shoe. Um, and I thought that, I think that car is still beautiful to this day, but it, it really reminds me a lot of this car just by how the cockpit shoved in the back with the long nose. And that BMW always was reminiscent of this. I'm not sure if that was ever on purpose, but it, it certainly did remind me of that. So I always found these cars fascinating. And, you know, the next generations, I think, of the two and three are equally as beautiful, but they just, the original has its own appeal. And, and you get into different variations of cars for different reasons. Um, now on this, the front subframe was carrying the engine. It was carrying the suspension and the front bodywork. It bolted directly to the tub. There was no ladder construction frame like they had in most cars of the day. So it was making it heavier and it was making it a lot uh, not, not a lot stiffer, but it was just making it a lot more cumbersome and it was two different pieces and it wasn't sort of working um, as one unit as it liked to do. Now, this was modeled after the Jaguar racing car, which was a D-type, which won Le Mans three years in a row, I believe, starting in 1955. So that's probably, you know, part of the reason why this has the clamshell hood on it, which I think is incredible, just because you can access the vehicle so easily, the suspension, the engine, whatever you might need to do in the pits. It's just a very easily accessible engine. Now, I know this is a die-cast car, but I mean, they are very very reminiscent of what the actual cars were. I mean, that's where they built them off of, why they modeled them. So, you know, there's going to be some variants and things, but it does give you a real great visual on what these cars are and to be able to sort of hold it and look at it and turn it and sort of inspect it. It's, it, you sort of get to spend some time with these cars that you wouldn't otherwise, if you saw it in a showroom or on the road or whatever it may be. Um, so it, it's, it's, Granted, as I said, it's a, it's a small car, but it is a treat to be able to look at these cars and just, as I said, discuss it. And it's, it's something that, that gives me an avenue to, to enjoy cars and, and, you know, share with the people and things like that. So now these were originally built as a rear wheel drive, two plus two, I'm sorry, a two seater. They ended up building a convertible off this as well. They built a two plus two um coupe which is you know had rear seats it was some sort of i want to say nine millimeters longer but that seems a little too short to really make a difference of anything like that um but i'll tell you what this green in these cars is mostly what you'll see the jaguars in uh the reason why this was this was coming back from uh auto racing in the in the origins of it, each country was given a different color, so you could signify when you were watching the race where you knew where people were from. Green was the UK, so that's why you see a lot of cars in green, Jaguars in green, and and they call it British Racing Green. And I think, quite frankly, it's the one color that looks beautiful on this cars. Uh, Germany is silver. Uh, Italy is red, well you see the Ferraris are all in red. Uh, French is blue, so you'll see the Bugattis a lot in blue. So those are the very reasons why you see those cars and those specific colors a lot, is because that was what was assigned by the Racing Commission at the time. So, um, I don't know, I, th I think they're a beautiful car. Now, not going to talk too much on the, on the next series. Hopefully we'll have another car, maybe sometime down the road, where we could, uh, you know, inspect them a little more. But as you look around this, you'll notice it has the leather straps on this, which was the engine hold down. It's got the knockoff wheels on it right here. So this little sort of, uh, little I can't even think about it, what to call it, sorry. But it's a knockoff cap. And what you do is you hit that with a lead hammer. I've said it before on some other shows, but you hit it with a lead hammer and it spins the, the nut off. It's an easy way to change it in the pits. They didn't have air guns. They didn't have things like that. So it wasn't, you know, amazingly quick or easy, but it was definitely faster than taking a lug wrench and turning it all around and, and doing all that. So it's, uh, you know, some technology, and a lot of people mimic that now in, in modern cars to sort of show the, the knockoff caps. Um, now, there were, you know, only a finite number of these made. I mean, the 3.8s, there was 15,490 of these made. The 4.2s, there were 17,320. And then those 2 plus 2s, there was over 10,000 of those made, which is unusual and you don't, you don't sort of see them much or you've seen them and they just look unusual and you don't really know it. Um, but hopefully you enjoyed this. I mean, as I said, this gives me just an avenue to discuss cars a little more, talk about why I like them, give a little bit of weird information that I like and that's why I sort of retain strange things like the colors of the car thing. I, I really enjoy that. 
And uh, as I said, it just gives me an avenue to speak about cars. Hopefully you'll enjoy these. We're going to come at you every week with a bunch of these. We've also got the car spotting episodes that we do. We've got the 88 mile per hour regular show that we do. We've got an Instagram, 88 mile per hour baby. I have my own Instagram, which is Eric Noni's. A wide variety of things going on, but please come back, check us out, subscribe, check out the channel. More shows to come. Stick with us. We're excited about doing these shows. Let us know what you think. Make some comments down below. Subscribe to the channel. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Next time from 88 Mile Per Hour Studio, we'll have another car. One of these behind me. I got more over here. I got a couple over there, and I got more over here. So there's more to come. If you have a special die-cast 118 scale 88 mile per hour sort of car that fits into the thing or whatever you think might be. What I said there made no sense, to be honest with you. Uh, if you have a car that's a die cast uh, that you think would be cool to show, you want to send it to the show and we can use it, put it on the show, It'd be great. Let us know. Otherwise, we'll talk to you soon. Hope you enjoy the show and we'll see you. Platz, Hanstuck, Platz. Braver Hund.